Thank you everyone for being here. It's a great pleasure to talk about uh, my work on information design for congested social services. This is joint work with uh, Jerry Anundraj Wong and Wahide Manshadi. So the inspiration for our work is the uh, observation that most social services are severely congested, leading to long waiting times and a lot of inefficiencies. And uh, many examples uh, of, are this, for, for example, you have long wait lists for public housing for low-income uh, uh, families, as well as uh, uh, often hours of waiting for uh, health care in urgent care and emergency visits. So there are many reasons for these uh, severe congestion, uh, apart from being the, uh, the fact that there is limited capacity. Uh, fairness and equity considerations also imply that uh, you cannot use prices to uh, allocate and ration service in these settings. Uh, moreover, uh, there is an inclusionary intent behind these services, which uh, sort of makes it hard to turn away people who seek these services, so you cannot even do admission control. Right? On the other hand, you know that in these uh, people usually do not take into account the negative externalities they impose on others, so these services uh, typically get uh, uh, used by a broad set of people, some of whom may not have as pressing a need for the service as others. So, Given this uh, user heterogeneity, a natural question to ask is whether you can share uh, wait time information or congestion information to incentivize those users who have lesser need for the service to either forego or delay using the service. And uh, this has been uh, covered in practice. So for example, this is from a news article I found talking about uh, a, a dashboard in Hamilton, Ontario that provides wait time information for urgent care centers, right? And this is a quote from that article that says that these information are especially useful for patients with less serious conditions who can use it to choose when and where to seek care, right? So the motivation for our work is, can we use information design to manage condition in the social services settings so that we can better target these services to those who really need it and thereby improve welfare outcomes, right? Uh, so specifically in this talk, we consider information design in a stylized queuing model where users have heterogeneous needs and we compare the welfare outcomes under information design against some very simple benchmarks like full information and no information, as well as uh, centralized admission policies where the service provider can actually dictate who gets to use and knows everything there is to know. Right. And the criteria that we are going to use is ex ante Pareto dominance. Uh, given the fact that this is a social service, we want to improve the welfare of all the users. Right. And uh, the main takeaway we have for this work uh, is that with sufficient heterogeneity in need, information design can actually be very powerful in improving overall welfare outcomes. So uh, before I get into the model, let me briefly talk about uh, some related literature. Uh, so we adopt the methodology of Bayesian persuasion to study our problem. So there is a long line of work in economics and the EC community that has been studying this uh, under various settings. Uh, more closely related is the recent line of work of information design in operations. So in particular, there are two closely related works. So the EC paper by Lingenbrink and Iyer actually study information design uh, in a queuing system uh, for revenue maximization. maximization. So in contrast, in our setting, there are no prices. Uh, so and our goal is to manage congestion, right? But we used, our model is based on the model considered there. Uh, the other closely related work is by Das et al, who study a static uh, model of a traffic network and ask whether information sharing can help in reducing congestion there. Right. Uh, of course, there is also a broad literature on social goods allocation uh, that studies various aspects of this problem, and many of which also consider queuing models uh, to make their analysis. Right. So with that, let me get, get into the model. Um, so the model uh, uh, will have a service provider who provides service according to a, uh, a, a, uh, using a queuing, uh, queuing system and uh, users who have heterogeneous needs and uh, have incur waiting cost while waiting. Right? So the model we have is a service provider uses an unobservable first come first serve queue. Right? For the simplicity's sake, we assume that there is a single server and the service times are exponentially distributed with some rate mu. Right? And uh, we assume that there are a heterogeneous uh, set of users. Uh, in particular, the type of each user determines their need for the service. So we assume uh, two types uh, of uh, users, the high need users who must use the service. So they, 
whereas the low need users are those who have an outside option. So in particular, these are the users who can be incentivized to um, perhaps forgo using the service. Right? And uh, we assume that the arrival rates for each of these are according to some Poisson process with rate lambda H and lambda L. Uh, for this talk, I'm going to make the assumption that there is no abandonment. So in particular, any uh, user who joins the queue will wait till service. And uh, also we are making some resource sufficiency assumptions, in particular, the total arrival rate of all the users is less than or equal to the service rates. So in, in some sense, the system is not already overwhelmed uh, by the demand. And uh, uh, let me briefly talk about the utilities of each uh, types of users. So we assume that the type of user has a utility UIK for join, from joining the queue if there are K users already ahead uh, of them. Right? And we normalize the utility for the outside option for low need users to be zero. Right? So we make very little assumptions on the utility functions. We only assume that the waiting is costly. So users do not prefer to wait. Right? So UIK is strictly decreasing. And furthermore, for uh, low need users, we assume that uh, they incur a diminishing incremental cost for waiting. So for each additional person, they're waiting, uh, the increment in the waiting cost is decreasing. So recall that the users do not know, observe the queues. So they don't know how many people there are ahead of them. So in particular, we assume that the low need users are Bayesians and uh, form expectations about the queue length. And based on that, they decide whether to uh, join the queue or use their outside option. And, and, uh, and the service provider's goal is to share information with low need users so that they can, some of them can be incentivized to use the outside option and thereby reduce congestion. So uh, we are going to use the methodology of Bayesian persuasion. So we assume that the service provider is going to commit to sharing information according to a signaling mechanism, which consists of a set of possible signals and a mapping that maps each state, in this case, the Q length, uh, to a distribution over signals. Right? So while this is very general, we don't need this level of generality. In fact, we can use the evaluation principle to, uh, uh, to restrict our attentions to uh, mechanisms where you only use two signals. In fact, you can make action recommendations, join or leave, and a mapping sigma such that obedience is optimal, which means that if a low need user is uh, asked, uh, is given the message join, they find it optimal to join the queue. If they've uh, given the message leave, they find it optimal to uh, 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 use the outside option. Right. So this uh, helps us reduce the uh, uh, signaling mechanisms to a sequence of probabilities PN, where PN is the probability of sending the message join when the queue length is N. Right. And we want this sequence to satisfy obedience conditions. Right. And let me briefly talk about it in our context. So recall that for every such mechanism, assuming obedience holds, uh, uh, the uh, uh, the, the, the queue uh, uh, evolves as a Marco chain, which has a steady state distribution pi, right? So in this setting, we assume that this pi uh, describes the um, uh, prior uh, belief of the uh, uh, arriving agent. And uh, given this prior belief and the message received, we want the expected utility of a low need users to be uh, greater than zero when they receive the message join and uh, 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 to be less than zero, the outside option when they receive the message leave. Right. So in particular, this is a setting of uh, Bayesian persuasion with endogenous priors, right? um, uh, where the prior is determined endogenously by the user equilibrium. And finally, we let SM denote the set of all obedient signaling mechanisms. And for every such signaling mechanism, we let WL and WH denote the expected welfare uh, in, in steady state. Right? So for low need users, they only get the expected utility whenever they join, whereas high need users get it uh, always because they always join. Right. And the notion we are using is the notion of Pareto dominance. So we say to uh, a signaling mechanism, sigma Pareto dominates sigma hat if the welfare under sigma is uniformly higher for all type with at least one type getting uh, strictly better utility uh, welfare. Um, and uh, we say a signaling mechanism is Pareto dominant if there is no other signaling mechanisms that Pareto dominates. So given this, we want to compare the welfare outcome under uh, uh, for Pareto dominant signaling mechanisms against some very simple benchmarks like the full information mechanism and the no information mechanism. Note that in the full information mechanisms, users will only join if their utility for joining is positive, 
So we let MFI denote the threshold beyond which a low need user will not join the queue under full information. Okay. On the other hand, for no information mechanism, the user's actions will, be, uh, will not be contingent on the queue length. So the, uh, the probability of joining will be the same for all queue lengths. We will also want to compare it against admission policies. So these are just uh, protocols, uh, PN, uh, probabilities of joining, that need not honor any obedience constraints. Right? So we let AP denote the set of all admission policies and note that signaling mechanisms are just admissions policies that honor uh, uh, obedience constraints. Right? So given this, we want to compare the welfare of uh, information design. Right? So to do that, let me be, start by talking about some structural results. Right. In interest of time, I will skip over the uh, giving proof intuitions, but if you have any questions, please ask me later. Right. So in particular, we show that a Pareto dominant signaling mechanism has a threshold structure. Uh, what do I mean by that? It just means that there is a threshold such that beyond that, the low need user will join with probability one. Above that, a low need user will join with probability uh, zero, and at that point, they might mix. Right. And uh, the notation that we are going to use is that if they mix with probability x, then uh, we call the threshold is uh, m plus x at uh, this thing. Right? And we can also show that an analogous result holds for Pareto dominant admission policies uh, using a similar uh, uh, proof structure. So in particular, we can also uh, get a threshold policies for uh, a threshold admission policies. Uh, also, the second result says that a Pareto dominant uh, signaling mechanism must have a threshold below the full information threshold. Right. So in part, the, uh, this just follows from the fact that if, if the mechanism has a threshold larger than uh, the full information threshold, you can always truncate it. And this increases the welfare of both types uniformly. Right. So the full information mechanism Pareto dominates any mechanism with a higher threshold. Right. Uh, finally, our third structural result says that if the obedience constraint leave does not bind for a uh, signaling mechanism. In, uh, what do I mean by that? Means that the expected utility on receiving the leave message is strictly less than zero. Then, if that signaling mechanism is Pareto dominated in the class of admission policies, then it must be Pareto dominated in the class of signaling mechanism. So, showing that uh, under this condition, uh, sigma is Pareto dominant, it dominated is e easier because you just it can you don't need to worry about obedience constraints. So, right. so given this, let me. Uh, briefly talk about uh, 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 the comparison of welfare under information design against simple benchmarks like full information and no information. So let me start off by the no information uh, mechanism. So recall that under no information mechanism, all users use the same, uh, pro uh, 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 the, their actions are independent of the queue length. So PN is P for all values of N. So this means that the only possibility for a Pareto dominant equilibrium is when PN is equal to zero for all. Right. So otherwise, it's not a threshold uh, structure. So from this, we conclude that if some low need users uh, join uh, under no information, then no information must be Pareto dominated. So uh, 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 and uh, when, uh, low need uh, low need users will uh, join if the system is not already uh, overwhelmed by high need users. So as long as the system is not already overwhelmed by high need users, then we know that uh, withholding information can never be beneficial. Right. Uh, at the other extreme, let, let's consider a full information mechanism. Note that under full information mechanism, low need users will leave if and only if the queue, queue size is greater than their full information threshold MFE. Right. So this means that whenever they leave the leave, uh, receive the leave message, uh, their expected utility for joining is strictly negative and the leave condition does not bind. So our structural result says that if full information is Pareto dominated in the class of admission policies, then it must be Pareto dominated in the class of signaling mechanisms. Right? And the former uh, thing holds whenever there is sufficient uh, demand for service. Right? Uh, so if there is sufficient demand for service, uh, full information will be Pareto dominated. So again, under reasonable uh, assumptions that hold in practice, we observe that both full information and no information are Pareto dominated and sharing information carefully can improve welfare of all types, right? And the, in order to understand how much better can it get, let's consider the comparison with the first bets, the admission policies. So to, to do that, uh, I'm gonna make the assumption that uh, the utilities for uh, joining are linear, right? 
So this is just to get, our, uh, 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 get some stronger results. And also we are assuming the homogeneity of inside options, right? So which means that the only heterogeneity among the users is whether, they, whether or not they have an outside option or not, right? So given this, we can define a weighted welfare. So for any given a weight theta on the low type, we can consider the convex combination of the welfare of the two types under any signaling mechanism. And for each such theta, we can consider the optimal admission policy as well as the optimal signaling mechanism, AP theta and SM theta respectively, right? And uh, it is easy to show that uh, the threshold under the signaling uh, mechanism for any particular theta must be higher than that for the uh, threshold under the admission policies. And this just follows from classical results that says that users fail to internalize the negative externality. Right. What we show instead, in fact, is that uh, for any, uh, 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 as long as there are some high need users, right? There exists a, a threshold weight theta bar such that for any weight on the low type users below theta bar, the signaling mechanism is independent of theta. Whereas for higher weights, the signaling mechanism, the optimal signaling mechanism is exactly the same as the optimal admission policy. So in fact, for small weights, this happens because the welfare outcome, uh, the, the, the leave obedience constraint is binding and the welfare outcome is completely fixed by this condition. So whereas for large weights, uh, we observe that neither obedience constraint binds, right? So uh, uh, both uh, uh, so low need users will strictly prefer to follow their recommendation in, in under the optimal signaling mechanism. Uh, in fact, they are never indifferent. And what this suggests is that information design plays a purely coordinating role to achieve the first best in this set. And this is interesting because if you consider admission policies, uh, they uh, typically require you to know the user's type, and uh, which is often not possible in practice. Whereas signaling mechanisms, because high need users always join, you don't need to know the user equilibrium. You are just providing information to all those who, to everyone. Right? So uh, just to illustrate our uh, uh, results, just, I'm just end with some numerics. So uh, this is for a linear utility function. If we consider the full information and the no information policies, we get a, a welfare for the high need uh, users and the low need users. And um, if you consider the set of uh, Pareto dominant signaling mechanisms, we get this uh, frontier. And we see that uh, there are some signaling mechanisms where uh, for small, uh, where you can actually uh, Pareto dominates both full information and no information. And for small uh, uh, changes in the uh, low need users welfare, you can significantly improve the high need users welfare. And finally, if you consider the set of all admission policies, we see that there is a significant overlap for uh, higher weights uh, theta. And there are some admission policies that achieve uh, higher welfare for high, high need users, but uh, these are not feasible uh, in practice. Right? So to conclude, uh, we observe that information design uh, uh, provides a, a significant Pareto improvement over simple information sharing mechanisms like no information and full information uh, under reasonable practical uh, uh, set, uh, reasonable assumptions that hold in practice. And, uh, also with sufficient heterogeneity, information design can coordinate users action to achieve the first best. In fact, you achieve the same welfare outcomes as centralized admission policies. So overall, we uh, conclude that information design can be a valuable tool to improve uh, access to these essential services for uh, disadvantaged uh, users. Right? So with that, let me conclude. Thank you.